which brings us on to, yeah. the, to the next topic, which is how we're actually catching wild fish. Can you give us a, a bit of an overview of how we're, we're catching them? How are they dying? Well, look, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's varied. Hmm. Um, I'm going to start with the best. <laughs> Should we start with the best? Let's be positive. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> The, the best example that I can think of from a welfare perspective in relation to commercial fishing is um, basically the Pacific tuna industry. So these guys, they basically have um, baits on barbless hooks. They have a set uh, line. There's a bunch of guys in a boat uh, and they're effectively throwing the line over immediately pulling out the, the tuna, the tuna gets stunned and killed and stored on ice mm -hmm. within moments. The reason that's good is because it can be, it can be sustainable, so it's not too bad from, an, from a, an ecological perspective, although you, know, you want to watch that because it's a high-quality product. Um, but the reason why they look after the welfare of the fish is that the, the, the product, every individual fish, is worth you know, thousands to hundreds of thousands to you know, half a million dollars each, depending on where it ends up. What? Right? So if it ends up in like the top sushi restaurant in Japan or something like that, the value of the product is insane. And it's already well established that if you can limit the stress and anxiety that the fish is suffering during the entire process, then the quality of the product is actually better at the end of the day. Um, so there's a heap of research that shows that to be the case. Uh, and so there are restaurants that will not take fish captured in any other way. Uh, so that, that is probably about the best one can imagine. Mm. At the other end of the extreme... But before we go to the, yeah. the other end of the extreme, um, I yeah. suppose e even if we imagine this, this best case scenario, um, the, the, the animal is, is, I'm assuming, feeling like a hook enter through their mouth, which we would imagine yeah. does cause... It. I mean, if it happened to me, I know it would cause yeah. me intense pain. Yeah, would, yeah. Would it, is it any different for the yeah. fish? No, and I mean, it, let's not forget that fishes are physiologically... Um, designed, call it, or they've evolved for um, basically zero gravity, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're neutrally buoyant in water. They are not designed to cope with gravity. So even taking a fish out of water into gravity can cause internal damage. Mm. So imagine being taken out via a hook in your face and exposed to gravity simultaneously. Now, fortunately, we are literally talking, in this case, we're talking about literally seconds because the lines are short. All the guys catch, throw the fish over their head, and it lands and is killed and stunned mm. really fast. So it's over pretty quickly but that's not to say that there's no pain involved right but mm. it's still from my perspective best case scenario for wild fish capture right and i suppose since you said that these these animals can be can go for like hundreds of thousands of pounds maybe even half a million i suppose we are really talking about a minuscule number of animals yes. in, pro in proportion to the to the whole industry so rather yeah. than talking about the worst case scenario let's talk talk maybe about the majority What's, what's happening yeah. to the majority of, of fishes? Yeah, so the, the majority of fishes are actually captured not by hook and line. Um, they're most often captured by some kind of seine net. Uh, and a seine net is effectively a huge net that's dragged behind a boat. And it can vary. It can vary in size. Sometimes it's, it's dragged behind two boats that are separated from one another. So the nets can be massive. They can be drawn um, over vast distances for long periods of time. Um, and it can be set at pretty much any depth. So let's, on average, you know, basically what's happening to a fish in that time. First, it tries to maintain its speed and keep in front of the net. 
eventually it tries to turn around and escape or it, it's exhausted and falls back into the net. Obviously, that's not a, a happy start. <laughs> Once it gets into the net, uh, it can be crushed by the other fishes um, as it's been drawn along. Eventually, the, the nets are drawn to the surface. Now, depending on how deep they are, if it's a deep sea trawl, then on the way up, the fish suffer from barotrauma, which basically means anybody who's tried to dive down and your ears start to hurt when you're snorkeling, it's the opposite. As you're coming up, the gas inside your body expands and it expands rapidly. And the, the higher you go, the faster that happens. Um, and so it's, it's a terrible it's a terrible experience because any air bubble of any description inside your body basically explodes. Um, and it can be air bubbles in your circulatory system, in your veins, in your arteries. It could be in your heart. It could be in your swim bladder. Now, more most of the time, or in your stomach, most of those animals have a swim bladder of some description and the air cannot escape from that swim bladder fast enough. And so it ruptures without doubt. Sometimes the stomach and or the swim bladder um, are forced out through the mouth because there's nowhere else for it to go. Um, and, and so, of course, that is a really horrible experience, as you can imagine. All right, so they get to the surface and the horror story has really only just started because then they're brought, brought up uh, into the air and they're already being crushed underwater. Well, now they're experiencing gravity and the weight, not only of themselves, but all the other fish in the net. And then, of course, they're dumped onto the deck of a boat where they're sorted. Many of them are gaffed in the process, so they're literally hooked uh, as part of the sorting process. Uh, and a good number of them will suffocate if they're not already dead on the surface, of the, on the deck of the boat. To make matters worse, as if it could get any worse, uh, most of those fishes, after being through that trauma, are actually put on ice. And for most fishes, ice just slows down the metabolic rate. It doesn't kill them. So, in fact, what you're doing is prolonging the suffering. And a fish might stay alive for two, three hours on ice before it eventually dies, and it dies from suffocation ultimately. So the entire experience is, I mean, from any stretch of the imagination, is a horror show from start to finish. Um, and frankly, if people thought about it, um, you would never eat fish that were captured by a commercial trawler, ever. Uh, not to mention the fact that most of those fishing obs um, those fishing um, industries are subsidised by government because they're inviable economically without subsidy. Um, so, I mean, it's it doesn't make any sense from a welfare perspective, and nor does it make economic sense. Uh, but that's why that industry is failing. Um, we've fished the daylights out of the sea. There's nothing left, and there will come a time where that kind of commercial fishing will just won't exist anymore. What you've just described sounds like a complete horror show. It really does. I mean, it, it's, it kind of, it, it makes you think that one day perhaps people will look back on this in the same way that we look back on people just burning cats alive uh, or like yeah. whipping bears for, for just for pleasure. You know, it just seems like yeah. so barbaric. Yeah. And it is. There's, there's, no, there's no two ways about it. And the scale, the scale of the number of individuals this is hap happening to is just yeah. incomprehensible. I suppose this, yeah, is yeah. this is happening to more individuals each year than the total number of humans on Earth. Yeah. Yeah, by, like a, by a long way. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we're talking, I mean, this, the numbers are, they're conservative the numbers we're talking about between one and three trillion individuals, this is based on the number of reported landings by the FAO, right, the Food and Agricultural Organisation. 
So this does not include bycatch, which is massive. Mm. It does not include any of the countries that don't report to the FAO, and it doesn't report doesn't doesn't include any of the boats that are obviously operating black market. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, don't underestimate how huge that is. It's massive. So, you know, I, I would say conservatively somewhere in the order of five to 10 trillion individual fish would be more like it if you, you know, do a back of the envelope kind of calculation. Mm-hmm. And, and that's 10,000 times worse than anything we do on terrestrial, in terrestrial systems. And this, that's just the numbers and, and the scale of the, the pain uh, inflicted is just off the charts. Yeah. Uh, sounds unbearable and doesn't really seem like something I can comprehend. You know, we, we wouldn't, what you've, what you've said sounds awful, but I, when, when you're talking about something this bad, I don't think you can really do it justice because, you know, like we were talking about before, you never know what an individ, what it's like to experience what someone else is experiencing. We can tell each other and we can, we can say out, out of 10, how, how painful is it? But we don't really know. And when it comes to that level of unbearable suffering, it's something that most of us yeah. luckily never have to experience. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's enough to well, keep those fishes up. are getting 10 every time. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's enough to keep you up at night, isn't it? That, that kind of suffering. 